Knoxville, Tennessee has a growing and diverse community, which includes various aspects of the Asian culture. Today, we are here at the 10th annual Knox Asian Festival. The festival strides on bringing people together by providing harmony, peace, and unity. While Asians make up the smallest population in Knoxville, this one day event alone contributes $3.5 million to the city's economy. Get prepared and experience authentic foods, exciting performances, and traditional Asian activities. I'm your host, Amy Lee Lucas. And I'm your co-host, Megan Galbraith. Come spend a day with us. Before I moved to Knoxville, I actually lived in LA and I, I loved getting some shaved ice. And this is not your typical shaved ice. This is Chinese snow ice, which means it's shaved very thin and it almost melts in your mouth. All right, let's go find where Megan is. There are so many people here. I'm sure she's at a food vendor. We are here with Leroy, one of the founders of the Knox Asian Festival. Leroy, tell us what was the inspiration of creating the Knoxville Asian Festival here in Knoxville? Well, in Kumi's view, especially about bringing peace and uh, love and, and friendship with everybody, uh, uniting uh, Asian cultures, uh, that uh, the Asian cultures have a lot to share. And I think Amy actually has sake shots for us. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Cheers to 10 years. Cheers to 10 years. <laughs> Kumi. <laughs> Growing up in Knoxville, it has been very fascinating seeing the Asian culture grow over the past couple years, from opening up of restaurants and business and starting festivals just like this one, the Knox Asian Festival. As someone who moved here from California, this is an amazing place to raise a family and find a community. Now we are going to show you one of our favorite Thai restaurants, Jai D. We call this the Pad Thai. It's a Pad Thai, like uh, very popular in Thailand. It's the first uh, favorite in Thailand. We make chicken for you today, Pad Thai chicken. We make, uh, and on top with the uh, peanuts. Mmm. Oh, the flavor is so good. And now we are down at the amphitheater to watch our host and my best friend, Amy Lee Lucas, perform the dance Sabli. All right guys, now that we have checked out some authentic food, some exciting performances, I think it's time to go check out a traditional activity. Let's go see what Megan's doing. Tell me a little bit about the history of the kimono. Kimono, mm -hmm. well, the form, form is about uh, uh, around 600 uh, AD. So wow. it's a really long <laughs> history. Many of the patterns for wedding dress. Yes. Uh, many, uh, many wedding dress. We have a crane. They're going to have one partner in their, you know, uh, Oh, I life. love that. So the past, you know, many people wear those uh, patterns so that the, you got the right one and you're going to be together forever. forever. I love that. Tea ceremony is least like a 40 minutes. The longest one is like a four hour. I mean, yeah, four hour or something like that. You have to sit down like this. Look, the tea ceremony. But four hours, you can uh, get the dinner too. That's why super long. Bow you and me. Mm -hmm. And then let's take green tea. Pick up by your right hand. Put on your left hand. Mm -hmm. Turn twice mm -hmm. clockwise. One, two, sip just a little bit. She's going to ask you. How is the green tea? Then maybe you have to ask. Good? And then take your time. We hope you enjoyed the stories, the traditions, and the performances. Stay tuned for more incredible content. And until we meet again, keep exploring, keep learning, and as always, keep dreaming. <laughs>